raven's flock, the flock rundown is the place to be. My man Ryan has been a lifelong Ravens fan since he was born. So I'm telling you now, it's about to go down. The podcast, the flock rundown. Ravens, baby. Nothing gets better than waking up and wondering how high we can fly. Tune in. Motionless brainwaves attempt to swim there where the sense can tame the untamed. Appreciate you, Ray. What's up, Ravens fans? My name is Ryan, and welcome back to another episode of the Flock Rundown. The Ravens just wrapped up day 17 of training camp. It's flying by, man. The regular season is almost here. We got cornerback TJ Tampa off of the PUP list, and he did practice today. It was his first training camp practice, so that was great to see. Kyle Hamilton was at practice after that injury scare. He didn't have a full practice today. He was off on a far field doing some individual stuff, but regardless, Regardless, that's great news that there's no serious injury. Harbaugh said it's just a sprain. Newly signed wide receiver Russell Gage was a new absence today. I'm not sure what's going on with him at this point, but he wasn't there today. Rashad Bateman, though, did return. He just wasn't able to finish practice. There were some reports that he just really still didn't look right. It's that midsection injury rib area. He did one 1v1 rep and just couldn't finish practice after that. So Harbaugh talked on it, touched on it, said that he's still working back. Obviously, there's a lot of concern with the fan base, and I'm, I'm included. You know what I mean? I'm stressing out a little bit about this wide receiver room. Bateman's missing a lot of time again. I know that the injury's not super serious. I'm not necessarily worried about this specific rib injury carrying throughout the season. You know, get his proper rest and get back healthy. I guess I'm just more concerned because we've seen a habit of him just missing so much time year after year. It's just always something, you know, and it's not necessarily all on him. It's just the reality of the situation. He just consistently is missing practice, missing valuable reps with Lamar. And then when he gets to the regular season, he's not super involved like we think that his talent warrants. But that's because you're not there to build chemistry you're not there to you know become reliable in the offense so that the coaches trust you so hopefully he can get back soon fully I know he was back today which was a great sign when I first saw he was back at practice I was like let's go man like maybe I was overreacting but uh the reports are he's still banged up and not really practicing in full he wasn't able to do anything with the full team so we'll see how that goes I feel like he might be in and out a little bit here for the next week or so if that rib really still is bothering him but hopefully he can get back soon if not we gotta make a wide receiver move at some point we just can't rely on a thin wide receiver group with a Bateman that's in and out I trust Bateman's talent I do if Bateman's healthy and is out there for all of the season I think that he's gonna ball man him and Zay are good enough but he's never done that really he's never been consistently there so that's what I think scares me about Bateman and scares me about this wide receiver room is you're banking on health and you're banking on health from a guy that has never really provided you consistent health so that's a scary uh that's a scary bet or Darius Washington with another big day and he's just really stacking days I mean he's kind of been one of the main names of camp that keeps coming up practice after practice Harbaugh was raving about our Darius in his press conference today it's funny our Darius and I had a conversation today in my office and it was a good one it wasn't called to the principal's office it was just to kind of talk about his vision for the season and what he thought uh he could accomplish and he's playing at a high level you saw it today He's playing both safety positions. He's playing the nickel, and he could play the he could play the corner outside if he had to. You got to get you out of the game, and he could go in a dime if he had to. He knows the defense that well. Uh, his style is uh, is pretty much uh, patented. That's his style, the way he plays, and I think it's a style worthy of emulating. So. Uh, very glad he's on our team. I really think our Darius is carving out a pretty important role and a lot of minutes for him and a lot of playing time this year because he's so versatile. He's playing both safety positions. He can play nickel. He can 
play outside, according to Harbaugh. I wouldn't want, I think that's an emergency situation. I, I, I don't really want him playing outside, but regardless, both safety positions and you can play nickel, that's really valuable. And he already plays extremely hard. He plays like a Raven. I really think our Darius is in for a big year. I don't know if he's going to end up being one of the stars of the team, but I just mean he's going to contribute a lot. His role is going to be important, especially until Arthur Molette gets back. Maybe our Darius is playing so well that he eats in to some of Arthur Millette's role, you know what I mean? I could see that happening, especially the age difference. You know, they want our Darius to kind of blossom. He's got a lot more upside. Arthur Millette's aging. So I'm just super happy with everything I've seen and heard from our Darius Washington this year, and I'm super excited to go watch him ball. Pass rush coach slash guru Chuck Smith spoke to the media today, and I love when he speaks to the media. It's not very often, but when he does, you just always get such a honest response and I just appreciate that but he spoke on Adafe Owe and basically was kind of given a detailed summary of why Adafe didn't have a lot of sacks last year and he was basically saying that those five games he missed and the signings of Jadavian Clowney and Kyle Van Noy ate into a lot of Adafe Owe's reps but Chuck was raving about Adafe Owe's talent his opportunity this year and basically said that he's going to become an a-list pass rusher he's going to be an a-list rusher and i'm just excited for him you know he's buying in and as he always has he's a good dude and no one deserves to finally reach that pinnacle in adafe and i think he's going to uh you know go 100 percent to reach that goal i would love nothing more than to see adafe owe become an a-list pass rusher one of the best rushers in this league he definitely has the tools you know he has the body for it he's quick explosive strong i think uh I think there's potential there for that to happen, but it's never happened even in college or the NFL. So definitely not getting my hopes up. It's not something that I really expect. I'm not expecting a Dafe Owe to go out there and get 15 plus sacks. You know, that's probably what an A-list guy would go get. But if we could see 10 plus sacks from Owe, I think that that's massive. You know Matabike is going to bring it. And we heard nothing but positive things about Owe all training camp. That does happen year after year, though, so that's why I said I'm pausing some of my expectations, but regardless, I don't see why Dafe Owe wouldn't have his best year this year. He also has a lot of future money on the line, so that's something to think about, and if you know anything about Ravens history and pass rushers, it always seems like when all the money's on the line, that's the year that they go crazy. Now, we do have Dafe Owe next year, too. We picked up his fifth-year option, but he's still playing for that next contract, whether that's in Baltimore or somewhere else he wants to cash out there's no doubt about it everyone in his position does and usually that Ravens pass rusher kind of goes crazy when that money's on the line so we'll see I wouldn't complain about it I would love nothing more than an Adafe Owe breakout year another edge guy on that Ravens defensive line is Tavius Robinson now he was a rookie last year Played some meaningful minutes. I thought he had an incredible rookie season, especially where he was drafted. This is not a first-round pick guy who came in with an enormous amount of expectations, but I think Tavius Robinson exceeded those expectations last year. I would expect that role to grow, and Chuck Smith spoke very highly of Tavius Robinson today. He's never turned down one rep since he's been here. That's the best way to describe this dude. Every play, and I'm not exaggerating, he has given effort. Every day, Tavius Robinson listens to the coach. Every day, he works out hard. He's early. Every day, when he gets in those drills, he puts hands on people in the run. He continues to work hard to continue to develop as a pass rusher. And his main uh, responsibility for us, because remember, Tavius played last year. I mean, Tavius was in big games early on. He's not, I mean, he's not like a second-year guy who's never played. I mean, he's went out there and, and smashed with some of the, the great teams that we faced. But... I really can't say enough about him as far as who he is and how physical he is. And he takes, shows no mercy. Tavius Robinson is everything you look for. And what, like Coach Harbaugh says, a Raven, Tavius, and I always remember, he had, I'm going to tell you, he has never turned down a rep. He's never not run to the ball. And that's, that's saying a lot. Kyle Van Noy also spoke to the media today and had a lot of good things to say about Lamar Jackson and his leadership is what really caught my attention. And I've seen that over the years too. If you've watched all of Lamar's pressers and just kind of watched him from the moment that he was drafted until today, you can see that evolution. I'm very proud of him. Me and LJ are, have a good relationship and I'm happy for that. And just seeing his growth 
not only as a player, but as a person is awesome too. Just his leadership skills uh, being off the field has grown, and then his leadership skills on the field has grown. Um, just wanting something done precisely and going and communicating that and then just talking trash. He's always going to do that. So it's always fun to have those competitive periods against him and, you know, just him working on his craft. You can see his mechanics. You can see him, you know, pushing the ball down the field and then just running right now. I don't know very many people right now that can catch him. I mean, he's he's one of one and it's been really impressive to see him um, in the open field during practice, obviously we're not tackling, but mm, there, there a lot of misses are happening. So it's fun to go against a top quarterback like that every day to get better and just excited to see what he's going to do this year. Hearing about how fast Lamar is right now, too, is extremely exciting. I cannot wait to see Lamar Jackson this year. But his leadership is really what's impressing me. I feel like he's getting more and more vocal as the years go. And obviously getting franchise money, becoming the franchise has a lot to do with that, I think. But also just growing as a man, getting older and realizing what it takes to make everyone around you better. You know what I mean? He's holding guys accountable. We just talked about the other day when he was yelling at Nelson Aguilar for dropping those two bombs that's important. You need to hold guys accountable. It doesn't mean that they're beefing or anything. It's just, hey, we can't have that. We got to focus. We got to lock in. We got to make sure that we're catching the ball, especially when it's right there in your hands. And what's really special is Lamar does it with such balance. He's yelling at a guy and holding him accountable competitively because he wants the best out of you, but he's also your friend. He's also someone that everyone on the team loves and looks up to. It's not some guy who's just demanding perfection, but no one really likes him. And he's always just pissed off. Lamar's personality is relatable. It's, it's down to earth. You know what I mean? He's himself. He's not trying to be something different to inspire others. He's just himself, but he's becoming more and more vocal on the field to his guys, and they still love him on top of that. So I really just think that's the best balance to make everyone around you better. And I just really want to highlight that. Shout out Lamar Jackson, man. Shout out Kyle Van Noy for sparking the idea and talking about Lamar's growth and leadership and just how good of a person he is off the field as well. And he really is one of one, man. There's no other person like Lamar Jackson on this entire earth. And I'm just super blessed, super thankful that he's in a Baltimore Ravens jersey. That's it for today, guys. I appreciate you as always for tuning in to another episode of the Flock Rundown. Have a beautiful rest of your day, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Motionless brainwaves attempt to swim. They wear the sense, can't tame the untamed.